Lawsuit number 24 is expected to be filed today against Deshaun Watson. His lawyer, Tony Busby, told Mary Kay Cabot of the Cleveland Plain Dealer that on Friday. Friday, an eventful day for the case. It started with Rusty Harden and Leah Graham, the two main lawyers representing Deshaun Watson in these 23, soon to be 24 civil cases, doing an extended interview on Sports Radio 610 in Houston. And at the end of the interview, Rusty Harden, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is basically what he said. Hey, look, everybody needs to remember that, and he used the term happy ending. What he means is a massage that has a consensual sexual encounter at the end of it, that that in and of itself isn't illegal as long as the massage therapist consents and you aren't paying extra for that sexual service. Those comments went viral. They triggered a reaction. He ultimately issued a statement trying to clean up the mess that he had created by saying what he said, because what it does, Chris, and we're not going to spend a ton of time on this because I think everybody finally understands where this case is evolving to. I think Deshaun Watson has no choice but to admit, and I think his lawyer essentially was flagging that issue on Friday, that when it's time to try these cases, it will be acknowledged by Deshaun Watson that he did hire a stream of massage therapists, 24 who ultimately sued him, another 18 who vouched for him, hoping, expecting, anticipating, wondering if these things would become consensual sexual encounters and trying to engineer that outcome. And when Rusty Harden says that's not illegal, that's not a violation of anyone's rights, it's not illegal, it's not a crime to do something that makes someone uncomfortable. Right. That speaks to Intent, the inescapable, though, right? I be exactly, the pattern. Right. The pattern. Right. When, when you set up the massage on Instagram, are you looking for a massage? Right. Are you really looking for that? Or are you part? looking for a massage that becomes something else? And, you know, here's the here's the fundamental problem. It clearly wasn't OK with the vast majority of these individuals who didn't engage in the activity. Exactly. The, 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 the Rusty Hart is trying to create this impression that this is just kind of the way it is. Well, you know, it happens. Well, the problem is your guy tried to make it happen. And with all but three of these plaintiffs, nothing happened, which means they didn't want it they to didn't happen. They didn't want it to, yes, right. So it gives credibility to their claim that right. he did something that left them offended, that left them scarred, that left them traumatized. His effort to cause this thing to take a turn toward a sexual encounter crossed the line with them, as evidenced by the fact that they didn't follow him across that line. The mere fact that they didn't engage in it is evidence that they were offended by the effort to get them to go to that place. And th that's why, look, and, and maybe they're doing it because they have to do it, because they know there's no way they're going to be able to prove otherwise. But, man. I don't know how that was Chris, any good at all. I mean, that, that to it, me, it's makes not, no it's not. sense. Like, yeah, I don't see... Like you're literally again, public opinion, court of public opinion in a real court. I don't see how that comment He's makes. Trying it, it looks, right. He's trying to normalize it. He's trying to normalize. I guess so. I think the goal is the goal is to start, and, and I'm not defending his strategy, but it could be if there's any method to the madness by talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and continuing to stick to your argument. At some point, it becomes normalized. A dynamic we've seen in our political life since somebody took a ride down the escalator seven years ago this month. If you say it enough, you repeat it enough, as outlandish as it is when you first hear it, it's like, you know, getting used to a hot bathtub. You eventually get used to it. Maybe that's what Rusty Harden's trying to do. But I think at the end of the day, that's what the defense is going to be. That it's there's nothing wrong with getting a massage and hoping that it becomes a consensual sexual encounter. And there's nothing wrong with trying to make that happen. That's going to be the defense. And these people weren't genuinely offended at the time based upon their behavior, based upon their text messages. They're going to get into the micro specifics of how everyone reacted and what they said. And that's what they want the media to do. See, they want us 
to be their surrogates in the court of public opinion that attack the credibility of every one of these claims. They want us to say, well, this person's story isn't holding up or this person's story. Well, they have access to all the deposition transcripts. If there's something out there that undermines the credibility of these individuals, they need to publicize it, just like Tony Busby is doing with the things that hurt Deshaun Watson. So, uh, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be objective and fair here, but I have to react to the evidence that becomes available. And if they're going to make the argument that Deshaun Watson – saw nothing wrong and there is nothing wrong with getting I'm saying this is their position I'm not agreeing with it but there's nothing wrong with getting the massages and hoping they turn sexual or trying to make them turn sexual you're walking into a bear trap with that one I think uh, I, you're, you're walking into a lengthy suspension and it's going to be harder to win the civil cases if that's your position agree to me the biggest thing is just the the public perception uh, the NFL, just uh, they're putting the NFL with those comments. You're putting the NFL in a t tougher spot. To me, again, there's just things that, like, if the NFL comes down too easily on Deshaun Watson, it's comments like this they're going to get thrown back into their face. So that that's where I uh, let, just, let's flip it I around. Get let's it. flip it around. Yeah, and and you know what, B people have have asked me why is the NFL taking so long? The NFL likes to wait as long as possible because they don't want to act prematurely because yeah. there could be some development that, that, that causes them either not to have to act at all or makes their decision easier. And think about this. I hadn't, I hadn't really considered it this way until just now. What Rusty Harden did on Friday, what he said makes it easier for the NFL to impose a lengthy suspension. If Roger Goodell, you know, why are they delaying? Yes. Well, well, maybe they're delaying because they don't know what to do. Maybe they're delaying because Roger Goodell has a faction of people in the league office that think Deshaun Watson should not set foot on a football field until these 24 cases are over, that he should be put on paid leave until these cases are resolved and then suspended without pay. There are people in the league office who believe that. So if he's trying to work his way through this balancing act where you're going to have people who are mad at you if you're too aggressive, in disciplining Deshaun Watson, you have people who are mad at you if you aren't aggressive enough. Now something happens. Something is said by Rusty Harden, acknowledging the mindset that makes it easier to suspend him for a full year, if that's what the commissioner's thinking of. I, I Between that and the Trevor Bauer thing, I just I think that this thing is going badly for Deshaun Watson in the court of public opinion, which Definitely. means it's going to go badly for him in the court of Roger Goodell. Definitely. I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm like, there's no way he's playing this year. There's no way. Like, does the NFL really want to deal with that? I mean, it, okay, so even if he gets suspended, let's say six games, I mean, week nine or ten, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be, it's going to be a huge story. You're going to have people. I wouldn't be shocked if he's playing on the field and all that if more people don't come out of the woodworks here with this thing. I know, again, just because they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he's playing. I got to speak up about the way I was mistreated. I, I, I just to me, I just I don't see it. And, it, you know, the NFL wants to talk about the shield and all of that protecting the shield. Man, I don't know. It's not a good look when we're talking about the highest paid player in football, the best contract in football halfway through the year. Oh, yeah, it has 24 civil cases uh, coming up on the radar, too. Oh, yeah, great, great. That's a good look for the league. That's where I look at it and just go, like, I just I would be shocked. I'd be shocked if he plays football this year at this point. Let me make one last point before we take a break, because what Rusty Harden and Leah Graham have been doing in recent weeks is to try to turn the tables onto Tony Busby, the lawyer representing the 24 women, 23 suits, a 24th coming. And He's been like a Pied Piper, and he's used social media to recruit more clients, and it's all about him getting on TV and him enriching himself by having all of these meritless claims. They claim, they argue that individually these claims have no merit, but Tony Busby used his social media platform, and he worked the media to get these people to come out of the woodwork, okay? Here's my problem with that argument. Turn on your TV, you can't go 10 minutes without seeing a commercial trying to get somebody to make some claim against someone, whether you use some product, whether it's a weed eater or talcum powder, asbestos, yeah. you've been injured by a truck. I mean, that's what lawyers do. And when you think about it from the perspective of the massage therapist who may have no idea that what happened in that session with Deshaun Watson 
was something that crossed the line for which there could be appropriate and fair compensation. That's how they become aware of it. And the fact that all but three of them did not engage in sexual activity with Deshaun Watson tells you they objected. It tells you they had a problem with how he was behaving. It tells you that they do not go along with the idea that the massage leads to a happy ending. So, they, they look, I know they're trying to play the hand they've been dealt, but it's all the more reason why this should have been settled in April of last year when they got caught up in this idea, this goofy idea that we don't want to have an NDA. We don't want to have a non-disclosure agreement attached to this settlement so we can tell everybody that Deshaun didn't have to pay very much. Well, they should have just done the damn NDA and been done with it then. Then they could have had it done in October, November, at least all but four of the cases they could have had done. They should have done that. Now, good luck. Good luck settling these. If you even want to, good luck. I think, I, I don't know. I don't know what it would take at this point, but if he was going to pay $100,000 each, October, November, that price has gone up. I don't know that another zero gets added, Chris, but that number goes up. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to try to sell it now. And I think I think it, it prevents a settlement from happening. And this thing is going to hang around with 24 cases. Last point, and then we got to go. Yeah. 24 cases. This is going to last into 2024 and maybe beyond. I, it seems like it. I, I know. The Browns. I, I feel bad for the Browns fans. Yeah. Browns I fans get mad the at me. Browns fans. I know. A, you guys shouldn't have to carry this burden around. I agree. For the next I feel bad years. for them, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I feel bad for Kevin Stefanski too. I do. I mean, I, I just feel like this was this was not his doing, and he's in the middle of it. No. Oh, hey, now you got to coach the team. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for screwing up everything within the city and the organization. I'll coach the team. No problem. I mean, that's 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 rough. There's going to be a cloud of uncertainty, barring a settlement, hovering over the Browns for the next two seasons minimum, maybe three seasons. They just don't deserve that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.